When the U.S. Navy wants to make a big impression, it takes people to one of its super aircraft carriers. These colossal ships stand 20 stories tall and stretch 1,092 feet from end to end, like the height of a 77-story building. Yet, the real spectacle happens on the flight deck. In full swing, the crew can launch or land a plane every 25 seconds, all within a fraction of the space of a regular landing strip. In this video, we'll show you what the U.S. Navy's modern Nimitz-class aircraft carriers are all about. For instance, can you imagine they can go 15 to 20 years without refueling? If you're curious about how aircraft carriers work and want to see the most impressive ones, keep watching. We would also appreciate it if you subscribe to the channel and leave a comment. At its core, an aircraft carrier is just a ship with a flight deck, a designated area for launching and landing airplanes. This idea has been around since the early days of airplanes. Within a decade of the Wright brothers' historic flight in 1903, the United States, the United Kingdom, and Germany were conducting test flights from platforms attached to cruisers. These experiments proved successful, leading naval forces to modify existing warships into carriers. These new carriers revolutionized military capabilities, enabling the transportation of short-range aircraft worldwide. While carriers played a minor role in World War I, they became pivotal in the air combat of World War II. For instance, the Japanese launched the infamous 1941 attack on Pearl Harbor from aircraft carriers. Today, super aircraft carriers are integral to nearly all major U.S. military operations. While the ship itself may not be a formidable weapon, the air power it carries can be the decisive factor between victory and defeat. Carriers can move in excess of 35 knots or 40 miles per hour, which gives them the ability to get anywhere in the ocean in a few weeks. The U.S. currently has six carrier groups stationed around the world, ready to move into action at a moment's notice. Since the 1950s, most U.S. supercarriers are built in Newport News, Virginia at Northrop Grumman. They use modular pieces called superlifts, each weighing 800 to 900 tons and containing many compartments. The ship is assembled by lifting and welding these superlifts together. The carrier has about 200 separate superlifts, and the final touch is adding the 575-ton island to the flight deck. Similar to a family boat, an aircraft carrier moves with propellers, but these are much larger, 21 feet across. Powered by nuclear reactors, the carrier's turbines generate over 280,000 horsepower, propelling the ship forward. The turbines also produce electricity for various ship systems, including a desalinization plant that turns salt water into fresh water, producing enough for 2,000 homes daily. Unlike older oil boiler carriers, modern nuclear carriers can go 15 to 20 years without refueling. Although more expensive, this design minimizes the need for regular refueling and involves a longer, complex process. To ensure safety, the carrier's nuclear reactors are well shielded and closely monitored, reducing the risk of a nuclear disaster at sea. Taking off from an aircraft carrier is an exhilarating yet perilous task. The flight deck, a small and dynamic space, requires precision and speed to launch planes safely. To facilitate takeoff, carriers utilize catapults, four powerful devices that propel planes at high speeds in a short distance. Before takeoff, the plane is positioned at the rear of the catapult, and the crew attaches the tow bar and holdback to secure it. The catapult officer, also known as the shooter, prepares the catapults by filling the cylinders with high-pressure steam from the ship's reactors. Once the pressure reaches the right level, the pilot engages the engines and the catapult officer releases the pistons, propelling the plane forward. The catapult system, entirely steam-driven, can accelerate a 45,000-pound plane from 0 to 165 miles per hour in just two seconds. If successful, the plane takes off. If not, the pilot ejects before the plane heads into the ocean. Landing on an aircraft carrier is one of the toughest challenges for a Navy pilot. The flight deck, with only about 500 feet of runway, poses a significant challenge for heavy high-speed jets. 
To land, each plane uses a tail hook to catch one of four arresting wires, strong cables made of high tensile steel wire. Arresting wires stretch across the deck and connect to hydraulic cylinders below. When the tail hook catches a wire, the hydraulic system slows and stops the plane within a 315-foot landing area. Pilots aim for the third wire, the safest target. Landing signals officers guide the pilot through radio communication and deck lights, including the Fresnel Lens Optical Landing System. The lens provides landing guidance with colored lights, such as the meatball and green lights. If the tail hook misses the wires, the pilot accelerates to take off again from the tilted runway. Once landed, the aircraft is secured on the side of the deck. The flight deck crew is equipped to handle emergencies like fires or jet engine risks. The Carrier's Island, a 150-foot structure, serves as the command hub for flight deck operations. It houses radar and communication equipment for aircraft coordination. The top level, PryFly, is where the Air Boss and Mini Boss manage flight deck operations. The bridge, led by the captain, oversees navigation and ship operations. The Flag Bridge is the Admiral's command center. And operational centers below deck include the aircraft handling room with a Ouija board for tracking. While the top deck accommodates a few aircraft, the hangar bay serves as the carrier's garage for the majority of its 80 to 100 planes. Situated two decks below the flight deck, the expansive hangar is 110 feet wide, 25 feet high, and over 685 feet long. Divided into four zones with sliding doors for fire safety, it can store 60 aircraft, spare jet engines, and heavy equipment. An important aspect of every aircraft carrier is its onboard aircraft. Notable ones include FA-18 Hornet, a single-seat strike fighter jet designed for both air-to-air -air combat and ground attacks. F-14 Tomcat, a two-seater fighter jet optimized for air superiority, playing a vital role in protecting the carrier battle group. E-2C Hawkeye, a tactical warning and control system aircraft equipped with advanced radar to keep the fighter jets updated on enemy activity. S-3D Viking, a subsonic jet aircraft primarily used for anti-submarine warfare. EA-6B Prowler, an electronic warfare aircraft dedicated to jamming enemy radar and intercepting enemy communications. SH-60 Seahawk, a twin-engine helicopter mainly used for anti-submarine warfare and search and rescue operations. A supercarrier is often called a city at sea, housing 5,000 to 6,000 people for months. However, it's a unique city experience. Limited access to the hectic and dangerous flight deck means few see the sea. Cramped conditions include narrow corridors, tight sleeping quarters, with enlisted personnel sharing a small space. Jobs vary among the 2,500 in the air wing and 3,000 in the ship's company. Aircraft operations, maintenance, and carrier functions keep everyone busy. Facilities like galleys, mess halls, laundry, and medical offices support daily life. Despite challenges, the exhilarating moments on the flight deck make life on an aircraft carrier unlike anywhere else on Earth. That's all for today. If you liked the video, please share it with friends, subscribe to our channel, and leave a comment. Thank you for watching. See you soon. The future of aircraft carriers is assured. Tomorrow's oceans will be more complex and contested with new threats emerging, yet the carrier will continue to provide unrivaled conventional superiority to the few navies which can operate them. Only the United States, China, and France are building the largest and most capable category of carriers, the supercarrier. In this video, we'll show you them and find out how they can change the warfare. Are you ready? Subscribe to our channel and let's start. Aircraft carriers are the pinnacle of capability of any navy, and for good reason. They provide unrivaled conventional superiority over an adversary. The extreme range of aviation assets complicates countering them, such as by ground-based missiles, and their versatility extends from full-on war fighting through limited war to humanitarian and diplomacy missions. But only a few countries can build what we term supercarriers. A term coined to describe the U.S. Navy's Cold War giants, there is no clear definition what it means. Until now, the large aircraft carriers of other navies have always fallen short. The latest designs from China and France are worthy of the term. Other countries also operate carriers, notably Britain, India, Italy, Spain, and Russia. 
but these are smaller or less capable in some respect. There is no clear definition of a supercarrier, but these share key characteristics. They are the largest, can operate larger aircraft, such as airborne early warning planes, and their air wings rival most air forces. Gerald R. Ford Class Aircraft Carrier The gold standard for supercarriers is undoubtedly the United States. The current Nimitz-class supercarriers are being replaced by the equally large Gerald R. Ford class. These 100,000-ton behemoths are unrivaled in details, even if the others in this video will come close. Decades of hard-earned experience in supercarrier operations went into the design. Let's take a closer look at this aircraft carrier. Carriers of the Gerald R. Ford class have Advanced Arresting Gear System Automation, allowing a crew of several hundred fewer than the Nimitz-class carrier the updated RIM-162 Evolved Sea Sparrow Missile, an ANSPY 3X-band multifunction radar and an ANSPY 4S-band volume search radar, designated together as dual-band radar, initially developed for the Zumwalt-class destroyers, an electromagnetic aircraft launch system in place of traditional steam catapults for launching aircraft, a new nuclear reactor design, the A1B reactor, for greater power generation, Stealth features to reduce radar cross-section. The ability to carry up to 90 aircraft, including the Boeing F-A-18E-F Super Hornet, Boeing EA-18G Growler, Grumman C-2 Greyhound, Northrop Grumman E-2 Hawkeye, Lockheed Martin F-35C Lightning II, Sikorsky AH-60 Seahawk helicopters, and unmanned combat aerial vehicles. The biggest visible difference from earlier supercarriers is the more aft location of the island superstructure. The Gerald R. Ford class carriers will have a reduced whole life cost due in part to reduced crew size. These ships are intended to sustain 160 sorties per day for 30 plus days, with a surge capability of 270 sorties per day. Let's dive into some features of this impressive aircraft carrier. An electromagnetic aircraft launch system, EMAILS, launches aircraft by means of a catapult, employing a linear induction motor rather than the steam piston used on the Nimitz class. The E-Mails accelerates aircraft more smoothly, putting less stress on their airframes. It also weighs less, is expected to cost less and require less maintenance, and can launch both heavier and lighter aircraft than a steam piston-driven system, and reduces the carrier's requirement for fresh water, thus reducing the demand for energy-intensive desalination. Electromagnets are also being used in the new advanced arresting gear system. The current system relies on hydraulics to slow and stop a landing aircraft. While the hydraulic system is effective, as demonstrated by more than 50 years of implementation, the AAG system offers a number of improvements like the ability to capture unmanned aerial vehicles without damaging them. Another addition to the Gerald R. Ford class is an integrated active electronically scanned array search and tracking radar system. But let's move on to the next aircraft carriers. Fujian Class Aircraft Carrier Type 003 China's first aircraft carrier, the Liaoning exercising in the Yellow Sea, underlines China's growing experience and confidence in carrier operations. But the newest Type 003 Fujian Class, which is being fitted out in Shanghai, is the closest to the U.S. Navy's. It is slightly shorter, but otherwise similar in size. The Chinese design has conventional propulsion, however, compared to the nuclear propulsion of the U.S. Navy design. In principle, this gives the U.S. carrier an endurance advantage, although it needs to be remembered that the ship's surface escorts and aircraft all need replenishing either way, so the nuclear carrier still needs fleet auxiliaries to operate. Other aspects of the Chinese design are slightly less ambitious. It only has two aircraft lifts, versus three, and three emails, electromagnetic aircraft launch system catapults. This may reduce its air wing sortie rate. Port Avion Nouvelle Generation The French Navy, like the US, has much more experience of carrier operations. Their current carrier, the Charles de Gaulle, is nuclear-powered but noticeably smaller than the American supercarriers. The future Pang, Port Avion de Nouvelle Generation, will close the gap. At over 300 meters in length and 75,000 tons, it is only slightly smaller than the Chinese Type 003. Piaang will enable the French Navy to retain conventional superiority and more effectively project power independently or with allies. Studies on the Pang began in October 2018 
and the design phase is estimated to cost approximately $1.09 billion. The French Navy's next-generation aircraft carrier will be able to carry up to 2,000 people. The vessel will feature an angled flight deck and up to three electromagnetic aircraft launch systems. The Pang vessel will be able to carry up to 30 new-generation maritime variants of the new-generation fighter aircraft and remote carrier vehicles being developed in the future combat air system program. The aircraft carrier will feature a catapult-assisted takeoff but arrested recovery system, which will allow the onboard aircraft to launch from the deck of the aircraft carrier using electromagnetic catapults and land using arresting wires. The Pang will have the capability to hold enough ammunition for high-intensity operations of up to seven days. The vessel will be able to integrate new intelligence equipment and demonstrate superior power of command to perform increasingly diverse and complex operations. New Threats in Contested Waters The advent of a new generation of carrier killer weapons is testament to the continued relevance of the aircraft carrier. China has been building up several anti-ship ballistic missiles and testing them on fake carriers in the desert. Russia too has been developing the Zircon hypersonic anti-ship missile and maintains that the ginormous Poseidon nuclear-powered torpedo as an anti-carrier role. It also has the Kinzhal air-launched ballistic missile, which is claimed to be an anti-ship ballistic missile. And most recently, it was reported that Russia's Zmivik land-based ballistic missile will be employed as an anti-ship ballistic missile. What this latest project says about Russian confidence in the other systems is unclear. What is clear, however, is that carriers still matter to strategic planners. That's all for today. What's the best supercarrier in your opinion? write in the comments. And if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell. See you soon!